Hey everyone, Mr. Happy here, and welcome to my patch 3.3 trailer analysis video. If you just finished watching my 3.3 live reaction video, then you knew that this was coming. On top of that, I pretty much kept the same things. There's no Twitch notifications popping up uh, since I am live streaming this over on Twitch as well. We're mostly going to analyze certain key aspects of the story, aspects of the combat of the bosses that we saw here, since we did see a lot of them. And especially, we're going to check out Palace of the Dead. I might need to do a whole separate video on Palace of the Dead, just because I feel like I could talk about that for hours so i'm gonna have the trailer itself muted if for some reason you haven't seen the trailer yet you can go to the final fantasy 14 lodestone or if you're watching this on youtube check the description of the video so i mean we pretty much see nothing but dragon song war pieces for the trailer here i mean we literally it starts off with the main scenario with them defending the steps of faith as long as they can while americ and crew try to uh try to go what looks like convince race velger to help them in the war uh you'll see that in a little bit but it i mean this makes me question how Ishgard survived all these years. I mean, obviously they had the wards to keep them up, and apparently those wards are gone because they're just fighting them on the Steps of Faith. Like, that's the, the whole point of the original Steps of Faith was to prevent the dragons from getting close to the city. And it looks like pretty similarly to the first time we did Steps of Faith, it seems that that, that doesn't really matter this time at all. So, uh, thinking of that, and then you have Frace Velger, who's got a few of uh, her, a few of her daughters here as well, daughters and sons. I don't know if the one on the left is a daughter or a son. Probably a daughter, knowing the way that dragons work. Uh, so we have Frace Velger here. Um, him, Frace Velger is a him, by the way. And so let's see what else we have here. So yeah, and then I don't even want to know how Isgard defended all these years because they just they got shit on. Then again, if you have people like. Lucia, who actually seems to know how to fight dragons, unlike every other Ishgardian there is on the thing. I guess that does make a, a pretty reasonable difference. Looks like Amaric came back just in time for us to have a show. I like this. This is a cool thing to see all of the all of them backing off while we just walk towards Nidhogg. It's like, yeah, this is going to end now, you little son of a... All right, moving on. Uh, now, Weeping City of Mach, I mentioned this in the live trailer. It looks like those alligators are ready to pop out of the water, by the way, because that was they, there was something breathing under there. Uh, again, I feel like they did a beautiful job of this. I, I do agree with the idea that this... It's such a big area to only have a raid in. And this, by the way, cool boss. I mean, it looks like they they pumped up the mechanics a little bit, but, I mean, we're only seeing glimpses of the fights, so it's really hard to say if they've if they've bumped up anything in terms of the number of mechanics, but it resemble it looks to me more World of Darkness-esque in terms of the number of mechanics present, so that might be an indication, especially this, like, what the hell is going on here? He turns, so Ozma can turn into a triangle, he can turn into a cube, he can turn, a, he can turn into, it's a Rubik's Cube, apparently, and then this, which is just the scariest thing I've ever seen in my life, which is probably just a special attack, and then... I'll, so I'm still, I'm actually, I still don't think this is Lord Skafak, the demon that we freed. I think this might have just been the final empress of um, of the Mach, of the Mach Empire before we actually, before they, before they perished, pretty much. And she probably has maintained herself using the void magics or whatnot. I don't think that's actually uh, uh, Lord Skafak or Lady Skafak. I just, I don't, I just don't see that happening. Um, but yeah, like this is so much real estate to cover in the game and to only use it for this one raid is kind of upsetting i do hope that there's some use of it later but i doubt it they, they very rarely create these zones for multiple purposes holotali is like one of the only places that's been used just over and over and over again but either way i mean it looks beautiful this is one of my favorite shots the clouds here it literally looks like they googled like a horizon like a like from an airplane and then they're just like hey guys so just here's what we do take this google image and just like Put it on copy pasta in like a 360 around the arena, and it's gonna look beautiful, guys. It's gonna be like, wow, those clouds look so real. It is because it was it was Google Images. <laughs> it seriously just looks like they took a picture from an airplane and then just made it the background. <laughs> but it looks great. I I don't I'm not complaining because it, it looks it looks it, that's how good it looks. If anything, I, I'm happy it looks that way. And besides, I just wanted to see him do that again. I don't I don't need I don't care. I don't, I don't want to, just, I'm not doing it, there we go, okay, so, um, then we have Holebreaker, which looks, it basically, it, it's Holebreaker again, but the bosses here were pretty cool, I mean, it, it's, it is a training ground, so like Halatali, it makes sense to be going up against people, as opposed to, like, just enemies, like, like, wildlife and stuff, 
Uh, this was, I still like this. This is the first boss from Final Fantasy VI, whether you want to call him Welch or Emir. I noticed he froze some people there. I mean, that was a pretty big uh, part of it. Let's go back. I also see a tether right there, which is scary, because whenever there's tethers in the duty finder, well, you've all done Ramu hard mode before, haven't you? Uh, so he froze what looks like he, or he, tr yeah, he froze three people, or he tried to freeze three people. He only successfully froze two of them, even though he targeted three people with the ice mechanic. And I'm assuming that you'll either have to free them or you'll have to hide behind it in order to prevent something. I don't know. Maybe you can use those tethers. Uh, maybe you can use those ice things to break the tethers. Looks like this did AOE damage, tether two people together. Uh, it's a question of how you break the tether. Do you have to get frozen? Do you have to, I don't know. There's a lot of things that they could do there. There's potential in that fight. And then we had the, by the way, these guys are huge. I'm just, I'm, I know that it's a Lollafell, but those guys just look way bigger than I expected them to. And the fact that we're fighting Mistbeard as the last boss, we're fighting, uh, I almost called her Moonbreeder. We're fighting Merlewub's, like, literally her right-hand man. And I think that's really cool. It's too bad we're not actually fighting Merlewub, who's standing right there in the back with some of her other military uh, people. And then there's just, there's, we, so they opened a treasure, I noticed that there's a treasure chest open, and when they open it, then he did that. I wonder if you get to, if you open a chest and he does a random attack after it, like you just pick a random chest and he does a random attack after, uh, that would be pretty cool. That would mean that it would be kind of a different fight every time you do it, while not actually being different, because you'll eventually see all the mechanics. But I'd say that it's, I don't know, having a warrior as a last boss is a scary prospect, because he could probably solo everyone. I mean, he, I mean, let's just, let's just put it this way. He's a warrior, and he's going one versus four. That pretty much describes all warriors ever. So, I mean, I think it makes perfect sense. Now, this is the Aquapolis. We got to see more of this um, from the recent live letter. That's a boss. Occasionally, you get a boss floor, and he said most likely if you get a boss, it's going to be a Cyclops. This made it seem a little bit, not bigger, because you still pr pretty much just, you start a floor, you go through a hallway, you get to the big room... You beat the room, and then you have a 50-50 chance of moving on to the next floor. The odds of you getting to the 7th and final floor is, is still pretty low. I mean, I'm looking forward to doing as many as I can, but I don't know how long it's going to take before he actually uh, he actually gets to the point where he can do that until we can actually reach the 7th floor. GG doing that. I don't need to say it. Like, literally, the trailer knows that no further comment is necessary. GG does the Manderville, and that's it. That's, they know that's all you need to be excited about Hildebrand, because who, who, no one cares about Hildebrand outside of, the, man, outside of being a Manderville man, or uh, doing a friggin' Manderville flex, or just whatever the hell you want to call it. Then we got Growing Flowers. I mean, the fact that Growing Flowers is in the trailers, I mean, they seem to be pretty hype about developing the ability to grow flowers and use them as hair adornments. Uh, great. The hair here, by the way. So I'm going to point this out right here. So we got the pompadour. Now, I know that Johnny Bravo didn't necessarily have a pompadour. He just kind of had his hair pointing straight out. He, it was pretty close to a pompadour, though. In my, in my opinion, it's as close as you're going to get. So here's the thing, all right? They also show that there's a new dance, and it's basically the equivalent of Do the Monkey With Me. They don't show that in this trailer, but they showed screenshots. Yeah, everybody in the chat always says it's JoJo. Everybody goes immediately to that. I still like to think because the monkey, the this dance where he does this, is was there's a screenshot of that. I am calling this the Johnny Bravo hairdo, and I am making Johnny Bravo character. Like I just want to have a character that is Johnny Bravo, pretty much. And there's also the wink emote that's coming out. So, I mean, literally they're giving you every tool you need to womanize as much as possible and role play as Johnny Bravo. I'm just saying, like it seems like they they did that. I'm just saying that they did that. It seems that they have done that. I mean, some new thing, some of the new gear looks sexy. I mean, I love the uh, the beast tribe gear. It just it looks really good. The beast tribe gear, and then the the pig from the light, that thing looks creepy as hell. Still, I'm just saying, I'm I'm just saying, that's creepy, dude. Uh, new front lines. I mean, this. I mean, front lines is always fun. I'm just like. I want to see how it does with the feast being in the game because people seem to enjoy the feast more than front lines, but that's not everyone. It's just a question of how popular will this be while feast is still going on, while we have we have literally back to back seasons of the feast, uh, and especially because wolf marks don't necessarily serve as 
an incentive to go into the feast because gear doesn't matter in the feast. So, you you know, normally when you have battlegrounds and then you have an arena, you use the battlegrounds to get gear for the arena. And they tried that originally, but the problem was they released the Wolves then before the battleground when they should have done the battleground before the arena. Um, so it just, it didn't make much sense. But now it's like, with Wolf Marks really not serving much of a purpose because PvP gear is very limited in how, how effective it actually is at increasing your stats. Because it's, if you have a high enough item level gear, you're not going to see any sort of stat increase from those. Um, it's, it's concerning to me to see if Shatter will actually be popular. It'll be popular because it's new, at least for a little bit of time. Um, I'm just curious about its, its long term. I, I, that's just how I feel about it. it with, with little incentive to, and it's not very good practice for the feast either. Like, that's another thing. It's not like you're going to go into 24 versus 24 versus 24, be like, yeah, I got really good at PvP, and then go into the feast, because you probably get destroyed, in all honesty. So, it's, it's, it's going to be interesting seeing how Shatter kind of plays into the whole PvP meta right now. All right, moving on, we have the Deep Dungeon, the first ever one, Palace of the Dead. This was probably the most impressive part of the trailer because it was more than I thought it was going to be. It's bigger than I thought it was going to be. The effects that happen were more varied than I thought they were going to be. Oh, and by the way, I'd also like to point out that there's there was Diable Dreadworm gear already. I probably should have pointed that out earlier, but uh, that probably means that final coil farms for the for the tokens for Dreadworm will probably be a thing. I like that there's like, there's floors where it transforms you into monsters, there's floor, there's, you know, sometimes buffs that I like the one that's coming up here in a little bit. I also like that their weapons look sexy as hell. This right here I thought was hilarious, where they the all the enemies get turned into chickens and, and kappas and friggin' frogs. And by the way, if if that's not who I think it is, I am going to be very upset because, man, Tamtar hard mode, it's been a while, right? <laughs> it has indeed been a while since, uh, since uh, Tamtar hard mode. And yeah, some people are pointing out that in some floors it looks like they're just auto-attacking. It's hard to tell if they're doing that to keep the enemies alive for the sake of the trailer, which they shouldn't need to because they can just turn on god modes. Um, that being said... Um, it could be possible that maybe there's floors, but, well, I mean, we already knew there were, like, probably sections where you wouldn't be able to use magic, or you wouldn't be able to use weapon skills, or there would be special buffs and debuffs and whatnot, but uh, if this is an Edda, I will be surprised, even though it looks like she's got herself some new digs. Maybe it's somebody else entirely, it's possible, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with it being Edda, considering how creepy that was and how creeping, creepy she is on the norm. And then we have, so at first I was like, why are they saving Sorkai's for so late into the trailer? Because normally they show things in a very concise manner where the dungeons are all near each other. But now it makes sense why we're fighting Moglin, because you'll see who the last boss of this dungeon is. I mean, when, when we saw we were fighting Moglin, it made the most sense. It's just that Sorkai is Redatosker's old home. So I'm wondering if the reason why we're here in Sorkai is just to prove to, and there he is, Frace Velger, prove to Frace Velger that we are worthy of his assistance in some way, shape, or form, because I doubt, it's not like we're going here to kill Frace Velger, like, we're not doing that, but he might want us to prove our worth and that we are worth saving uh, the Ishgardians. This arena, by the way, cool as hell, there's a dragon head floating around, all the, all the platforms have to be jumped between, and then there's just friggin' little tiny Ockmorns that follow people around, it's pretty cool. It's, uh, it's, uh, pretty cool. It's, uh, pretty cool. And then we have the final steps of faith, which, by the way, I'm just gonna say I called it, um, on one of the things that's gonna happen right here. So, one of the things about final steps of faith, which is what the official name of this is, is that even though it is ultimately a fight against Nidhogg, it doesn't look like it's in any way restricted to one part of the steps of faith. It looks like it takes place on pretty much the entirety of the steps of faith, depending on which part you're on. It seems that there's different mechanics going on here like at this point he's basically doing the equivalent of dive bombs you create a bunch of aoe's whichever side of the arena he's on so like you see like you can tell he is summoning this attack and then he's also laid himself over on one side of the arena and then he dive bombs across it hits half the arena so there's a lot of aoe dodging he also summons a lot of ads it looks like yeah because then we're also again we're standing on this platform so it looks like ultimately we're trying to cross the steps of faith to get to the very end to then actually confront nidhogg so it's not just going to be one straight up boss fight it looks like you actually do have to travel across the steps of faith to get to him and then when you do get to the end he looks like he's uh pretty pissed 
And then he, okay, so this answers the question of if he's infused with Estinian still, because it looks like he's basically turned into Super Nidhogg Estinian. I mean, that's, I, I don't really see another way to describe it, considering I can see Estinian's armor and Nidhogg's wings and all that good stuff. So he's been practicing. He's been practicing with how, with what he's going to do with this, and then just, boom, ends it with a jump, and that is how the trailer ends for Revenge of the Horde. So it looks like there's a lot of ads going on. A lot of those ads were present in the Aerie. Two of them were actually bosses in the Aerie, and the last one was actually, um, the last one was actually one of the ads that there's actually only one of that ad in the entirety of the area it's the ad right after the it's the second trash pack after the second boss it's one of those dragon ads like the last boss from stone digital hard mode um that has the the invisible sort of uh it, its attacks aren't it, it uses animations to tell you what attack it's going to use next there's no like aoe indicators or anything so considering there's going to be those three ads, plus Nidhogg's probably going to be messing with you the entire time. It looks like it's going to be a fun final fight on top of that Dragon Song playing or the remix of Dragon Song playing. I wonder if the music is going to change drastically going into the last phase of the fight after you actually get to Nidhogg and reduce his HP down a little bit. So overall, it was a solid trailer. I mean, it didn't. I didn't have a moment like I did with the last trailer, like I said with Sephiroth, where when he came out huge and the music pumped up but i was happy with everything that i saw other than my concern over shatter actually being important or actually being used so um those are also his generals from the fates in the turning mist yep that's another thing they're all the same they're all the same three models used well other than the the big one other than the other than uh dark scale dark scale wasn't there uh, but the other ones were the other three generals that are also fates um tharl um and kosh yeah tharl um and kosh so that's those are the ones that are going to be there so um, Thoral and Kosh aren't even in the other thing, but yeah, so those are the three generals from the Fates other than Darkscale himself, so that's, I mean, I'm curious if that means that I should go do those Fates and check what they do in those Fates, they don't really do much, they just fucking do AoEs, Darkscale's the only one with any real mechanics, really, mm. so, uh, yeah, there's, uh, there was a lot of things going on here, it's probably going to be pretty exciting the only thing that's disappointing to realize is that deep dungeon does not come in 3.3 it comes in 3.35 so when the patch launches as excited as i am for deep dungeon i'm starting to, have to wait another like five weeks before i actually get to do it so sad face sad face sad face sad face but anyway uh, if you haven't checked out the trailer go check it out for yourself let me know what you thought about some of the things going on here in the trailer story elements americ going to actually meet trace well go yeah going to meet trace velger on top of talking with some of the other uh npcs that are there working together with them so on that note i am going to wrap things up and get over to my live stream because we got to make it rain campaign to do that's the gold saucer campaign so thank you everyone for joining me on the youtube side those of you on twitch we're going to continue the stream but for those of you on youtube i'll see you next time until then take care